also I'll, I'll start loading his files and hey Dave you're up well, so, everybody. Uh, hey so um, it might be cooler in New York now than it is in Minnesota what's what's the temperature like in Minnesota now yeah we are hitting 37 degrees and it's actually showering here so we've got oh, some so nice rain going on it's balmy it's good bicycling weather then yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, I was just talking to, to Dave because, uh, you know, he bicycles and I bicycle a little bit, but my wife is an avid bicycler and, um, she goes by the expression is there's no such thing as bad bicycling weather, only bad bicycling clothing. So <laughs> if you dress appropriately, I guess it doesn't make much, much difference, but, um, so you, you have, um, you're gonna be talking about international tools and what prompted you to I'll just say to look at some of the tools that come from outside the US before we get started. Yeah, well, this year, um, being able to speak about invasion of the international ed tech tools was really triggered based off of some great conversations I've had at ISTE, um, the ISTE conference in Chicago this year. Uh, being mm -hmm. able to seek out and connect with individuals that have uh, different products that I found interesting myself um, that didn't reach out to me, but I, I actually was reaching out to them, um, was really a breath of fresh air. Uh, mm -hmm. So many times we get bombarded with sales pitches or we get bombarded with go try this and, and here's why, but it's all pretty superficial. Um, and the ed tech tools that I'm going to be showing today or this evening um, all have to do uh, with student learning and being able to um, share with you things that I've tried or I've used in uh, teacher prep classes. Mm -hmm. Okay, good. So I'm going to bring myself down. This the slides are expanded. Just as you know the drill. Just tell me when to um, when to advance the slides, and uh, I'll pop up from time to time to ask questions or to um, uh, I don't know, maybe even crack a joke. Who knows? Okay, Go sounds ahead. great. So um, if we look at the next slide, we um, can start thinking about what ed tech tools are and what ed tech tools um, do and how we use them. And uh, the first thing that we do, if you want us to flip to the next slide, is think about how we use them in technology integration. I think this is kind of one of those buzzwords or buzz phrases that we've all used and we've all um, really felt strongly about integrating technology into our lessons. Um, it's something that uh, scholarly researchers have developed whole frameworks around and technology integration is a meaningful piece when it's done in a meaningful way. Um, if we wanna to flip to the next slide. Sometimes when we think about ed tech tools, we are really thinking um, differently. And when we start thinking about ed tech tools in a different sense, we might be thinking about how we can use them, um, if you want to go to the next slide, in academic proficiency. And when we think about bringing students in, and not only just closing the achievement gap, but bringing um, that gap up while we're also making it smaller, but we're also bringing the upper students higher and the, the students who need additional supports um, up on that achievement gap area. Um, that's really focusing on how we can use ed tech tools to um, use it around academic proficiency. Uh, the next place that we can use it in um, is individualized growth. And individualized growth is uh, that maybe um, premium version of a piece of software that uh, assesses a student and spits out a path and uh, starts thinking about how those students are able to um, go on to something that is a remix of different activities that are uniquely for them, uh, but aren't unique to them. Uh, the next evolution of integrating ed tech or using ed tech in the classroom ends up being enhanced personalized learning paths. And these are similar to uh, that individual growth plan or individual growth path, but it, it really starts drilling into what the student needs. Uh, teachers here are also able to assign work to students specifically. They're able to use classroom observations. They're able to use formative assessment data to help drive uh, what they're doing. But when we kind of think about it, we think about what is ed tech all about and how can we use ed tech 
in a fashion that that really roots down to it being meaningful. And that all ends up being about how we can make strides in enhancing the student learning experience. Enhancing that learning experience of not only our K-12 students, but maybe our students at college level, our students um, when we flip into adult learning, they're, they're really learners. These might be your staff that you work with on a daily basis. These might be people outside of education that you're working with. If you're looking at using these educational technology resources in other settings outside of K-12 schools. But how do we make strides in enhancing that learning experience? And uh, today we're going to be talking about three different tools that I've uh, sourced that, that really do that. And incidentally, they all are coming from across the pond. So my name is Dave Blanchard. I am an education leader. Um, I'm a curriculum and professional development coordinator uh, for a school district here in Minnesota. I'm also an adjunct instructor at a local university. And then I am an instructional designer and a consultant uh, focusing on not only education, but learning in general and adult learning in general. Uh, my Twitter handle is right there. I would really encourage you all to follow um, because as we continue to grow our uh, social media and professional networks, what we end up doing is we increase uh, kind of the common knowledge and we start making connections with people that we don't necessarily have connections with and learning from what they're sharing. So how does this all fit together? If you want, Mitch, you want to go ahead and go to the next uh, my work with Cambridge Isani Schools and St. Cloud State University and instructional design all kind of fit in this um, traditional learning atmosphere. Uh, no matter how innovative we get, it is the, the brick and mortar facilities or the online platforms in which learning is happening. And we can look at the opposite side of this infographic and see that there are um, things like sessions that I really enjoy facilitating both in person or online. There's EdChat interactive sessions like we're here tonight, or uh, we can look up at the uh, colorful grid, and, and those are all the professional organizations that, that we can be working with. And if we take the left side of the graph and the right side of the infographic and really focus on how we are thinking about things, um, I think that that's where student achievement is. And, and that is my personal belief in how the things that I do, uh, both with pre-K-12 schools, private uh, functions, the university, and then all these types of events uh, really strive for making a better student learning experience and making uh, better learning opportunities for all. So today what we're going to be focusing on is that invasion of the international ed tech apps. And I love Bitmoji and I had to put together this uh, next slide that uh, really just uh, is kind of fun uh, to represent that we've got some some great international apps that we're going to be talking about. The first of which is uh, going to be in a web service called Bowclips. We're also going to be speaking a little bit about Creaza. And then the last one that we're going to be speaking on is uh, TeamLearn. So if we want to uh, start talking about bow clips, if you can slide to the next. Uh, the, the big takeaway um, with bow clips that I really uh, kind of believe and the reason why I think that this is an important uh, ed tech product is it is fully licensed media made simple. In a world where we have um, YouTube and we have free online resources everywhere. We're not necessarily acknowledging that we do also have uh, licensing agreements with different companies that we need to uphold. And we have things like copyright and fair use that we need to keep in mind. Uh, so if we want to go, we're going to go through the next couple of slides uh, pretty quick here. Uh, Bow Clips really focuses on the mass amount of, of video content that is available. And Bow Clips takes that and does some pretty unique ways of curating it for education uh, that we're going to be diving into uh, this evening. It allows us to uh, not only format it in a way like a playlist that we can share with students, but we can also trim it. We can embed it in different ways. And what we can do is we can really share some, some premium content with our learners, to, all within a fully licensed realm. Uh, we can flip down to the next 
and we can see that uh, Bowclips is a really fast platform. Things load very well, uh, and the way that the content is easily searchable, you're able to find things that you're looking for that are relevant and things that have been vetted by other teachers and tagged by other teachers to uh, really make sure that a computer isn't just pumping out algorithms. A lot of videos are, are hand tagged. We also know that it's safe. Uh, I think this is one of the biggest pieces for me as, as an educator. When I taught uh, in, in frontline teaching, I taught third grade. And in third grade, students have various levels of um, maybe self-discipline on not clicking ads or uh, really making sure that the things that they're viewing are appropriate. And since Bowclips is a premium service, it uh, removes all of the advertisements from videos. There are no ads within any of the Bowclips videos. And then the last piece is it's personal and you can um, organize and you can edit video uh, playlists to fit your needs versus um, the needs of maybe a uh, big curriculum company. There's a couple of them that we all end up using that decide what videos are you should be using in your class. Bowclips enables and empowers teachers to uh, curate their own content. So we can flip to the next slide and we're gonna be talking about how Bowclips is being used in schools around the world today. Uh, first off, we talked about how it has that appropriately licensed media. So when teachers are using Bowclips, we don't need to necessarily have that media specialist concerned about um, if content is within copyright, if content is being licensed appropriately, because that uh, service is ensuring that all of that uh, kind of red tape is already taken care of. Next, we have great ad-free content here, um, and really just taking the ads out of um, any of those free services. If we had a, a, an ability to, to do that, um, those video services would not be able to continue to be profitable and continue to be there uh, because YouTube earns all of the money through advertising. Um, flipping that onto Bowclips being an ad-free platform uh, really allows you to use it a lot more freely and a lot more openly with your students. The next piece is probably one of my very favorite pieces, and that's called the trim and share feature. Being able to trim to a specific segment of a video um, and then share that with uh, a link that is a uh, temporary link so that you know that it's available for those students for a, a good time period ends up being a very powerful tool because we've all pulled up content on other websites and needed to find where it was within that uh, within that larger clip and then uh, hope that it buffers correctly and hope that it's uh, ready to go and hope that you didn't uh, write down a time wrong. Bowclips allows you to trim and share that content with your students directly. Uh, there is one bonus here uh, that I think is pretty stellar that Bowclips does not necessarily uh, jump up and down shouting, but I think they should. And that is they uh, are one of Pearson Higher Ed's partners uh, creating white label content for Pearson. So the reason why I really felt strongly about adding this to the slide is that um, we all know that when we look at higher ed, we're generally thinking about premium content and premium access uh, because university students are paying for these experiences. And generally the content that they use is not only licensed for that, but is, is very premium, feels and and is edited well and, and just really robust. And for a company to bring that same quality of content down into a pre-K-12 platform, I think is a really powerful thing. Uh, the last uh, piece that I, I wanted to bring up is uh, in each of the uh, segments that we're speaking of tonight, uh, down in the bottom corner, you will see uh, a, a area of, of the world where it originates from. So Bowclips is a product of the United Kingdom. Uh, so if we wanna flip to the next slide, we have a little mo about bow. I thought that was kind of clever. Um, and when we start thinking about uh, using content, um, one of the biggest things that I think about is the content is, or the, the service is only good as the content. Uh, we all know that you can go out to YouTube and find 
hundreds of videos, thousands of videos on any topic, but we don't necessarily know how well vetted those content creators are. Bowclips has direct content partnerships from amazing content creators. Um, and I've listed a couple here. Uh, a couple of them that I did want to uh, kind of highlight are Minute, Minute Physics, SciShow, the Smithsonian, and TED. Um, these are uh, not necessarily big, heavy companies that are just producing content. But when we look at uh, the content creators behind Minute Physics or SciShow, it is a much smaller group of individuals who are really passionate about their topics. Uh, and for Bowclips to be able to partner with these incredible content creators means that when you're sharing this with your students, you're not only sharing um, quality content, but you're sharing content made by people who are passionate about those topics. So we're going to uh, take a look at our next slide and um, let's actually jump ahead down two slides to our video. Uh, the video that we have here today is just a quick video um, about how easy Bowclips is to use within your search. So here we um, are already signed into Bowclips, and as we look through, we can see the different uh, curated lists and content uh, kind of subjects or fields that um, have been pre-curated for uh, teachers to be able to use. Uh, we can see a really easy layout and uh, be able to preview any of the videos here. Uh, when we preview that video, we can see it in a pop-up, and this allows us to not only uh, watch it, but it also allows us to add it to a playlist. If those uh, kind of pre-developed themes don't quite work for you, you can also search for your own. Uh, here we're searching for planets, uh, which is a topic that in Minnesota at least is covered in various grade levels from elementary to secondary. And we can see uh, different content producers like this one, the SciShow, um, being able to be right at our fingertips and then have videos that are suggested across the bottom. Uh, when we click on our share video button, you can actually trim this video content. So maybe I don't want to share the full four minute video with my students, uh, but I want to share a specific chunk of that. We can easily drag these little bars to be able to uh, bring that down to the 30 or 40 second slip clip that you're going to want to share with students. Copy the link, which expires in 30 days, so you know that you've got that timely uh, way to share that with students or you can add it to a video playlist. Bowclips ends up being really easy and intuitive to use. So what we are going to do is uh, we are going to slide to our next uh, screen and we are gonna see that we have an opportunity to play. Uh, what we've got is a uh, short link to a uh, Google Sheet and what I ask is that as you um, claim a username and password, which Bowclips has provided uh, free of charge for us to be able to use tonight, please just mark it with an X uh, to the left of it. I see Mitch is coming back up. Right. So, I'm, so uh, what I'm wondering is if um, if people are watching the archives, if you're going to leave this up so that, uh, you know, so over the course of the next three or four weeks that people wanted to try this, if they could try it during that time frame. Yeah, absolutely. What we'll do is I will touch base with my um, rep with Bow Clips, who I've reached mm -hmm. out to, and uh, just confirm that those are available for past tonight. Um, if it's not, I'll make sure to update that spreadsheet just with some information apologizing. But yeah. one thing that I do have is um, an awesome opportunity uh, if we want to flip ahead a couple of slides, um, for okay. anyone who may be watching tonight uh, that is not necessarily synchronous with us or may be watching later, um, we've got a, an awesome opportunity that Bethany at Bow Clips has extended. Uh, so if you are watching this and the usernames and passwords for those trial accounts or those demo accounts are closed, mm -hmm. 
um, there is a new beta program that is being run. Uh, Bethany is going to be the great uh, guru behind this beta program and being able to um, share this information uh, with other peers that you work with through beta program and provide feedback to Bow Clips directly um, is really kind of what the, the root of that beta is. So if oh, you are watching, right. you are yeah. watching uh, not tonight and you're like, oh, I really did want to have that opportunity to explore um, past Dave's video clip of Bow Clips and I want to dig in and see what this is about. Um, that beta program is really the best way to do it. Now, the one thing that I do ask is that if you are going to email Bethany that you do just mention tonight's session uh, that you saw this opportunity on an EdChat interactive. Um, Mitch doesn't get a kickback. I don't get a kickback, no. but it gives <laughs> Bethany a context of, oh, this is why these people are um, just a, a huge flux of people are starting to join that beta program um, from a different kind of community. Uh, so we want to just make sure that we say, hey, we saw this on EdChat Interactive. Um, and then that gives Bethany some great feedback on where those invites are coming from. So so you've used, and, and I know you're involved with professional development, so your teachers have used video um, in a number of different ways. What are, the, what are the subjects that you think are especially well covered by Bow Clips? Yeah. Would it be, in you know, current events, study? science? Mm -hmm. in, in the secondary setting, which is where I really saw it take off because elementary, there's a lot of great content available there. Um, but in secondary, that's when we shift from content generalist teachers and, and previewing things to really specific and focused courses. Um, mm -hmm. Economics, world politics um, are both huge opportunities that you can use with Bow Clips. Science and social studies are really well covered along with... Uh, um, I, the, the big other content provider, uh, Khan Academy, um, there are similar style videos um, that Bow Clips has acquired licensing for um, to be able to use. Um, and Mitch, when you said uh, current events, Bloomberg, Bloomberg Media, Bloomberg Media um, is a great opportunity for those current event uh, teachers to be able to share new, new and updated content with their stu uh, students. So like right now, there's there's some, you know, some of the big topics that are in the news are, the, let's say, the recounting of the vote in Florida um, and Georgia, for that matter, uh, Brexit in the UK, um, you know, the stock market and its wild gyrations, if you're studying economics, uh, the balance of trade, um, you know, North Korea arms, the uh, what's going on with Saudi Arabia and Turkey and why Turkey may be positioning themselves in, in, in that debate. Those would all be topics that if you were teaching, you could really bring in videos and make them fresh for the students, right? Yeah, absolutely. And, and we all know in this world of um, transition from textbooks that were published before most of our students, um, into this world of very technical opportunities that curriculum uh, provides, we know that the, the curriculum dollars don't always roll right into buying updated content. Uh, but what we can do is we can supplement great quality textbooks that still have good information with incredible media from companies like Bow Clips. And being able to mm -hmm. forge that partnership in the classroom to say, hey, class, we are going to be reading about this topic. And learning about this topic, our reading might be a little stale, but being able to inject relevant, timely, um, and very current video content using Bow Clips is an incredible strategy. Well, and I'm thinking like in science, almost no matter what I'm studying, I could conceivably go to Bow Clips and find if there's a news story on that topic. And so then that makes it a lot more relevant for the students rather than just studying the theory behind something. You know, and the best part about Bow Clips is when there are those very relevant pieces, you're going to see it start populating on Bow Clips the next day. And the best part is, is you're not going to have to sit through the commercials. You're not going to have to sit through the ads that YouTube provides. You're going to get mm -hmm. that direct content um, cool. and being able to pull up those current events the day after with no commercials um, takes 
so many hurdles and barriers outside of using video in a classroom. And we all know that video ends up being an incredible resource to engage our students. Um, and, and this is just one more way to really embrace that opportunity. Great. Thank you. Okay. I'll come down. I'll stop bothering you for a while. Um, no, you're, you're, you, doing, uh, you're doing great. Um, I think what we're going to do is end up needing to uh, run tonight a little bit more uh, webinar style. So thinking about our asynchronous people um, or the, the people who are joining us after the fact, looking at the archives, um, we are going to probably shorten our turn and talk time. Maybe we'll do a turn and talk uh, between me and me and Mitch and have some some great dialogue about each one of the tools as we continue. Um, so the last thing that I wanted to really uh, share about bow clips is when we are using bow clips, uh, we can stop having to worry about what that suggested video content is. We're going to have to, we, we can stop worrying about, um, is there this algorithm that is saying, oh, Dave, because you searched these types of videos, this is the next type of video that you should be watching because there's ad revenue behind it or because uh, there's a premium uh, content creator that's paying for us to place it higher on your, your playlist. Um, Bow Clips sheds all of that. And being able to access the content you want in the order that you want is such a powerful piece. Uh, so now we can go ahead, Mitch was keeping me on time, I'm sure. Uh, we can go ahead and start looking at our next program. Uh, what we are gonna do here is we're gonna go from um, content consumption to content creation. Uh, this next product or this ne next ed tech tool is called Creaza. And Creaza is a creative and playful learning tool that allows digital storytelling for all classrooms. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a look at the next couple of slides. Um, we can see that this tool is not only available on a Chromebook or a full-fledged computer, but it's also available on an iPad. It's available on uh, different platforms and it's really simple to be able to use. It's simple and effective digital storytelling. Uh, so if we wanna flip to our next slide, um, working and reaching out to this company was was really fun because as I was stumbling through the uh, presentation hall of ISTE, I bumped into this booth because it was so interesting uh, because it was not only a booth about Creaza, but it was also a booth about other Nordic ed tech tools that are coming to the U.S. Uh, slowly but surely. And uh, it was kind of like a cooperative or, or a, a conglomeration of different companies that are um, just new and innovative and, and really something to start looking and keeping our eyes out for. Uh, so Creaza is being used around the world with all students so that all students and teachers, regardless of their age or their background, can create beautiful cartoons beautiful presentations, mind maps, and edit video, and edit uh, audio, which is coming very soon if it's not already updated. Um, being able to um, do this is very difficult for most ed tech tools. And that's because you either need to be old enough to figure it out on your own and really dig in and read through different pieces. And that's why I say old enough because you have to be have a huge amount of reading skills or you need to have enough background and training for um, like students need to have that background and training and how they use the different ed tech tools around video editing and presentation creation because it ends up being difficult around different um, tools to be able to, to really get your hands on. Um, at the core of Creaza is digital storytelling and being able to develop um, really beautiful scenes using very simple tools. And it's creation with knowledge. Um, so you are already understanding the concepts that you uh, want to create 
and want to develop a, a scene around, instead of just spitting out these declarative knowledge, instead of spitting out these facts that you've already memorized. So we'll go ahead and go down to uh, the next slide. We can see here that Criaza has some pre-generated tasks that you can actually assign to students and be able to assign out so that people can um, get started quickly. And uh, this allows you to uh, choose a topic like bullying or My Perfect Future, different theme ideas that are uh, pre-generated and pre-developed so that people don't need to start from scratch. And then it gives you a scenario for students. Uh, within Criaza, you're gonna uh, be able to see that there is um, a student platform side where teachers and students can connect and that teacher is actually able to assign things out to students and then track it. Uh, if we slide to the next screen, we can see how broad Criaza is used we can see that in Sweden, um, nearly, uh, I'd say over a third of school districts uh, have bought and used Criaza. So this is going to be the uh, red dots and the blue dots. And um, the red dots represent the 277 school districts within Sweden. And uh, we can see this very large and growing cluster who are uh, actively using it. Uh, in Norway, we have nearly, or they, not me, uh, have nearly a half of the municipalities that are buying and using Criaza. And um, in my discussions in prepping some of this information that I just found so riveting, um, the, the VP that I was speaking with um, ends up sharing with me that it, this is not one of those tools that people buy and then put on the shelf, but they buy it and they continue using it um, all the time because it's so simple for, for students of all ages to use. There really is, is not an age barrier for that. Uh, the tool provides a simple set of multimedia editing tools and the student provides the story. And this really um, shines through in this quote that I, as I was digging through uh, their website and different information uh, that I was, was using to put together tonight's presentation. If we wanna flip to the next slide, we, um, I just see this, and I think this is so meaningful that storytelling is data wrapped in context delivered by meaning. And I'm printing this out and I'm putting this on my wall here at work. Because when we think about what we want our students to do, we want them to have mastered content to the point where they can put it inside of context and, and, and apply it and do it in a meaningful way. And this can so, so elegantly be done through storytelling. Uh, let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. Um, I think that all the fuss around this tool ends up being uh, with a 400% usage jump over the last year, because as Criaza saw, saw that they were using the users were using tools and using different features of tools they continued to make improvements there and they continued to make improvements on the base content that's provided and they continued to make improvements on the user experience and they did that by learning what their users are actually doing and the the company wants to be the best digital storytelling tool by being the most intuitive and the most relevant tool for students, not teachers, but for students. And they don't have a, a metric that measures themselves by having the most fancy editing features. The metrics that they use to, to see if they are growing and to see if they are, are being successful are around, is it intuitive and is it relevant for the students to use? We all know that there are two or three other pretty big companies that offer web-based digital storytelling tools. And they get to be cumbersome because they start growing and adding features and adding tabs and adding menus. And while you can do really cool things and green screen effects and voiceovers and all sorts of crazy enhancements, you start to miss what that student experience was supposed to be about. Welcome back. 
Oh, thank you. So as you're talking, you know, the things that, that was popping in my mind are, so what are some of the really interesting stories, maybe you can describe them, that you've seen students create using Criazzo? Yeah. Um, I think the one that sticks out the most to me is um, a student used their own pictures and videos along with the cartoon pieces that are provided by Criaza to provide like an educational walkthrough of a field or of a vacation. You know, as teachers, we always try to say, hey, if that student's going to be out, they need to do a journal or they need to do this packet. I hope you're not saying go do a packet. Or you're having them do do these other things to make their field mm -hmm. or make a field trip, make their uh, vacation that happens to be in the middle of the school year more educational. And by letting a student enjoy that vacation and embrace different cultural experiences, and then say, mm -hmm. "Hey, now let's create an artifact of learning on what you did and why it was important to you," not necessarily jumping through this hoop that's created of worksheets. Um, I think it's such a powerful thing and allows that student to create this digitally tangible item that they own and are able to publish in their own ways. Mm -hmm. and I think, so you you have a, a master's degree in education and as you know, as yep. a student, somebody who studies the human mind, I mean, you, I'm, sh I'm sure you know that the human mind makes sense of the world through stories. That's how we think about everything and so it seems to me giving kids or you know students the ability to create stories rich stories um has to be powerful i think uh, it's funny because you know the, the it's not it's not just creonza but just the idea of storytelling and making sense i just saw a really interesting piece um in the last day or two like if you give people a choice and say which one of these is wrong Okay, which one of these doesn't fit in? And so the choices are cow, chicken, grass. So for you, cow, chicken, grass, which one of the three doesn't fit in? I'm going to go with the chicken doesn't fit in. Okay, why? Because the cow grazes in that grassy field. Okay, so, so what's fascinating to me is that in North America and Europe, about 70% of people say grass doesn't fit in because North Americans and Europeans tend to classify. Those are yeah. cows and chickens are living animals and grass is not. But in Asia and Africa, two thirds of the people say that the chicken doesn't fit in because the cow has a relationship with grass. The cow eats grass and chicken isn't part of the relationship. So, um, so it's not, it's not so like much, one's wrong I, and the I, other I is do, not wrong. I do, have to tell you, I do have to tell you my secret is my yeah. initial gut reaction. Those two uh -huh. living animals, those okay. two living animals immediately in my head and I fought myself and I said, no, I want to have, I want to have a, a much, deeper answer but i i would have fit into that category of 70% uh, of americans but if if you think about it it's just three data points and in our mind we establish a story about them and that's how we come up with the connection that oh the story is that these are living animals or the story is that cows eat grass and there's a relation and you know chickens chickens are outside of that relation whichever the story is and by by giving kids the ability to create stories, we're allowing them to make those connections, which are going to be a lot stronger. And they can compare them because different kids are going to come up with, or different students, uh, I think of them as kids as much as students, but different students are going to come up with different stories about the same thing, and they will enrich what the stories are that the other students are telling. No, oh, it's so interesting. And being able to share those those pieces with students and and have students create those stories and share that with others is just an amazing opportunity. And maybe we can start getting more of our students to think about relationship building instead mm -hmm. of classification. Cool. Okay. Uh, so, so I deflected you from yeah. your presentation, so no, I'll, I'll let you go back. And... No, and, and this is the perfect type of, type of uh, spur moments that we get to have here on Edge Hat Interactives. Um, so Creaza is um, a tool where there are two main pieces um, one is a mind mapping piece. 
And that allows you to create really in-depth and intuitive mind maps really easy. Um, so a mind map, for those of you that don't know, it kind of looks like that spider web with different ideas bubbled out. Uh, but the one that I really uh, am focusing on is a storytelling piece, um, the production side, not necessarily the planning side, and that's Cartoonist. And this has a huge library of pre-provided content made specifically for schools. So down the um, pane on the side, you're going to see different themes of um, cartoon pieces. So those will each come with a background, characters, and objects. Um, and you can uh, pull in from different themes to make some really creative pieces. On the next slide, we can see that we can actually edit video uh, within the tool and you can uh, preview it and edit it. Um, you're able to pull in, um, and this was the example that, that I shared, you're able to pull in not only images as background, but you're able to pull in videos as background. So everybody right now is um, buzzing over green screens in schools. And this is a way for you to do that green screen style technology with cartoonist characters instead of people characters. And you're able to overlay these characters on real videos that are happening in the background. You're also able to, if you wanna to flip to the next slide, edit the audio of these pieces. So you can not only narrate, but you can edit it in a very visual and intuitive uh, layout. And being able to do this uh, right as, as as close to professional software as you can get um, in, in this setting um, allows students of all ages to be able to create some pretty awesome uh, tools and experiences. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna flip to the next and we are going to um, watch just a short clip. Um, sometimes I really, as I share tools, I think about um, who's best able to share specific features and while I've used these tools, um, and I really believe in these tools, a couple of the promo videos are just stellar. And Kriaza is one of those that is just stellar. Okay, so now I have to say, I didn't see another video in the, in the downloads. Oh. There, was, there, was a, well, um, there, there was a JPEG or a, a PNG file. There was a slide. And there was the one video, but I did not. There, I didn't see a third I'm video. Sorry, I'm sorry. I had the. It's a. I had a video link. Um, I uh, didn't download it for us though. But what we'll do instead is um, post the video link to this video um, in our description page for the archive. Right. Okay. I'm. You know. Uh, I, so, sorry. Well, it, it saves us all a couple of moments. So there we go. Okay. Um, the main piece that I want you to just to keep in mind with this is that. Um, being able to see it in action and being able to use it are two different experiences and that people are really going to uh, enjoy getting their hands on it uh, rather than just seeing it. So, so this is great anyways. So what okay. we're going to do is um, here I was able to uh, work with Kriaza to be able to offer a time to play. And um, this is an opportunity for anyone to be able to get, anyone watching, to be able to get a uh, free demo account. And these are demo accounts, so uh, they will only be available for a certain amount of time um, or be active for a certain amount of time. But what you want to do is you want to head to kriaza.com backslash get account, all lowercase, and you're going to enter your email address in this uh, text box and uh, hit submit and check your email. Uh, when I worked through this process, I did need to check my spam or my junk mail uh, to be able to get that. And then what you're going to do next is complete a registration uh, form that you'll find a link to in your email address. And the promo code that you'll need for this to work is invasion, all lowercase because of the theme of our topic tonight, the invasion of the ed tech tools. Uh, if you enter that promo code invasion, you'll end up generating yourself a uh, login for a full access demo account. Uh, you'll be able to play around with all the features. Just know that it is a demo account. Cool, thank you. Yeah. Um, so one thing that um, I didn't do with our last tool um, is talk about our point to ponder. I accidentally skipped over that. Um, <laughs> you'll be able to, to go back and, and think about this for bow clips also. But as you're using these tools and playing around with these tools, I really want you to think about how the tool can enhance the way students create in class 
or enhance the way for bow clips, enhance the way that students are able to um, not only access content, but be able to enhance that learning experience of your class. Um, well, I not think just today, yeah. I was going to say look today, at. students are much more used to seeing, to playing, to seeing video um, than they are in reading. And so allowing them to create video easily um, is probably a, a, a smaller jump from them than having them create essays or, 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 or writing. And in order to create a good video, you have to be thinking a lot, you have to be planning the same way you would write anyhow. So it's the two feet on each other, but it's more aligned to the way the um, teens um, and preteens communicate today, right? Yeah, absolutely. And and being able to utilize media as a, as a true form of learning and a, a true resource that can be integrated into class instead of just shown or consumed really is a game changer in, in teaching. Yep. So then what we're going to do is uh, skip up to our next topic around uh, team learn. Don't do this slide, everybody. That slide is a dead link. I just checked it. My apologies. Um, and uh, team learn is simple project management for students. Um, when I found this tool, I looked at my um, Scrum board and my Trello board and my Google Keep, and I went, I've been doing it wrong. I need to do things like this. As adults, we end up working on teams that need to um, break projects apart. And we do that as adults, and we have post-it notes on our desk, and we have disorganized mess, and we work through it, but we're not building ourselves up for success. Um, what Team Learn does is it allows uh, student teams to be successful in their project management. So we'll flip to the next slide. And as we think about what project management looks like in a school, it's either going to look like a Kanban or a Scrum style project management. And both of those are going to be um, styles of managing projects where you have a board or a page that is developed or kind of designed out into a chart of uh, status and being able to see where the project is or where parts of projects are in that project completion timeline is really essential to being able to talk about um, really student-led project-based learning, blended learning when students are needing to manage multiple projects and assignments on their own um, or collaborate with each other outside of the classroom and also being able to organize and collaborate with each other in ways that um, allow for accountability and allow for um, transparency in whose role is what. So what we're gonna do is we'll, we're gonna go through the next couple of slides. Uh, Team Learn is a um, new tool that is fully integrated into uh, Google Suite for Education or Google EDU or um, Google Apps, whatever your district or organization is calling it, but it is the education side of Google. Um, and they are not developed by Google, but that's what they've built their whole platform on. Um, and what we can see on the next slide is that it works on all devices and it does so beautifully. We can see here that same project management uh, or the different kind of visual um, that we spoke of and as, students are using this, they are actually um, moving the little colored notes from planning to being worked on to uh, complete and then to approved. And as we go into the next slide, um, we can see that this can be done with multiple people. So just like a Google Doc, this updates in real time and you can see the different little uh, icons of, of little people's heads that are um, showing who is responsible for what tasks. In this example, there's different groups um, and group A is still in a planning phase and group B's tasks and the orange team and the pink team's tasks are all started and group C is done. And the last one is either idle or approved. Um, so we know that everything is currently being worked on or was just completed. 
as a teacher, you can also see that there's activity or, and as a student, you can see um, that people have been working on these projects and you can see the last couple um, things that have been worked on. So we'll go ahead and we'll click down into the next slide. And here we can see um, my plan for EdChat Interactive and um, my to-do list was still generating questions. Uh, the other night when I developed this, I was already done sourcing images and done with my social media uh, posting. Uh, or I was doing those things, excuse me. Um, the piece that I was done with was the invites. Invites were sent out um, and were being generated. And the thing that I already approved and checked off my list completely was the creation of the slide deck. Uh, the, what I did to demonstrate here the, the different uh, ways that we can collaborate is I signed in with two different accounts so that we can see in this example um, either the orange DB account or the uh, little head account um, were, would be two different students that are interacting. Down in the bottom corner, we can also see a little plus button, and that's going to generate another task that you're able to work on. So let's go ahead and flip to the next slide. And this is really thinking about how we can play and how we can get our hands on it. Uh, this is probably the most simple ed tech tool to be able to get our hands on tonight. And all you need to do is head to teamlearn.org and um, be able to enter in a personal or education Google account. And when you do that, you're going to be um, going through and just doing the general approve and authorizing Team Learn to access your account. Uh, then you're going to be able to explore what Team Learn can do in your setting. So, so as I'm listening to you talk about Team Learn, it seems to me one of the big problems that um, that that teachers are having is trying to incorporate making and doing into the classroom and one of the difficulties is to cut it is to keep track of what all the the students are doing as they're working on these different product uh, products and and projects so um is that how teachers that like you're saying teachers are using team learn yeah. is to make that process a lot easier yeah being able to have an opportunity for us to see a, and, and for teams to be able to hold hold each other um, accountable for where the status of their project is, um, really is what Team Learn is, is founded on. Uh, any project that a team is, is working on in a student setting or not is, is founded on being able to be transparent with where each member is in their um, completion of different tasks assigned to them. And Team Learn is a very visual and transparent way to do that. Uh, the thing that I love is it's color coded and it's super easy to use and you can pull it up on any device that's logged into the internet. Hmm. And um, so, so are teachers finding that they can use it for, pro you know, like semester long projects or is it really primarily for projects that um, their students are be going to be doing over the course of a, of a few days? You know, what's nice about it is it ends up being flexible and meets the students and the teachers on whatever project they're doing. Since mm -hmm. um, you can add additional tasks at any point um, as a team is going through or even um, a student writing a research project, this would be a great mm -hmm. off the wall or a, a random idea. Um, the student could generate the first couple of tasks that need to happen and they, maybe they do that off of a rubric and then they're going to start sliding that across their, their process. And mm -hmm. as they get feedback from their teacher, they can add additional task cards and be able to slide those across as they complete them also. Really only approving or, or moving into that last column after they've received that great feedback saying that um, that next step of the project is done or that next step of the research paper is done. So it can be used and modified in different ways, uh, being able to see it as, yep, we're going to do this over the course of a week's project, or being able to add tasks to it and go over the length of a course um, are both great opportunities. And is it uh, flexible enough so that if there were a group of people doing the projects, different tasks could be assigned to uh, different students? Yeah, down at the bottom of each one of the Team Learn cards, you mm -hmm. can actually assign an owner to that card. Um, so you can generate a team and just like a Google, Google doc, you invite people to that team learn project, and then mm -hmm. you are able to, uh, tag each project 
for each task of the project with a different person's uh, name. And then it all stays synced so everyone can see that. So really, so A, it's making it a lot easier for the teacher. B, it's it's helping the students get organized and get organized as a group. And my, you know, what, what my experience has been with the students is that when they start learning this type of systems thinking and planning, they start internalizing it so that for mid-level or small projects, they don't even need it anymore because they, they have it. They, they, they know how to do a project. Yep, absolutely. And, you know, I was looking around for, for my post-it. Um, this is my physical copy. Um, and as I look at my post-it pad <laughs> of things that I do, um, yep. we can see I have different post-its for different things and they're placed in different ways. And I've got pages of post-its. If I ever lost this, I would be out of luck. And I should be taking this and transforming that into um, a product like Team Learn, being able to track it in a different way. Um, but you know, when I went through and internalized my processes, it was mm -hmm. post-it notes. Uh, so that that'll have to be a habit that I get updated. So I know that start next week you've got four days off. So that seems to me like a good project. It's <laughs> the transfer. Transfer to team learn, right. right? I mean, you don't want to spend yeah. time with your family, right? No, not at all. You know, I mean, that notebook just has like four pages, five pages of notes like that. Right. Um, <laughs> maybe what I'll do is as I cross them off, instead of adding new ones, I'll transition to my oh, all my okay. new tasks to team learn. Um, you know, and the thing that I like about it probably best is it's all integrated. It's not one more mm -hmm. username. Um, and, and it's just right there. It's with, it lives within your Google mm -hmm. drive. So even if you forgot the website, you can start mm -hmm. as a favorite file and pull it right up within Google drive. Yep. So I see we have, we have two people tonight. So I just want to encourage them, uh, Max and, uh, Bethany. Um, if you have questions, there's a, um, there's a, either the question mark or, uh, there's a chat button next to your avatar and you can click on that and you can, if it's the chat, then Dave will see what, what you're typing in. If the question, then I'll see it and then I can pass it on to Dave. So feel free to volunteer. Um, in the meantime, uh, why don't I advance your slides to, to, the, to the next Yeah, sounds great. Uh, what we'll do is we, um, you know, our, my, my point to ponder here is how we can use this to enhance the way that students engage in class. And I think that Mitch and I talked about this mm -hmm. great. Um, so what I'd challenge you to do is reflect on what you're doing in your own class where you could use Team Learn um, and start small. And maybe you only start with one group of students and see how it works. Uh, but being able to um, really continue um, embracing different ed tech tools and exploring them, you're gonna find the ones that stick to you. You know, my post-it note. That was my post-it mm -hmm. note joke. Um, and and the ones that, that don't stick to you and, and pick up the, the pieces and, and really start to move forward with it. Um, and you've so, been introducing it to teachers since this this, this all fall, right? So have yep. you seen teachers take to project-based learning better or problem-based learning better now that they're used Ooh. to, now that they have yeah. the tool? I, I'm not sure. I don't have the longevity to see that quite yet. And the group that I really enjoy providing the um, all three of these tools to are actually teachers who are student teachers. Um, I've ah, enjoyed sharing right. these with my student teachers the most because now what they're doing is they're going into the field and they are starting to explore and share with their cooperating teacher some of these tools. Um, oh, and being be able to talk about these tools that nobody else knows about. Um, you know, mm -hmm. I, I've shared with them that as new graduate student teachers are often thought of as like the techie person in the room. And I swear a half my class looked at me white face and goes, I don't even know much. Um, right. So one of my challenges that I wanted to provide is um, to, to have some level of comfortability with mm -hmm. different tools and being able to share new and innovative tools really allows them to continue um, sh sharing things that people uh, might, might expect from new teachers. Cool. And that's how sharing and making those connections. Yep. Yep. So um, what we'll do is we'll jump down. Um, team learn. If you want to jump down to the next one, it is completely free. Um, so go use it, try it. 
Um, and that kind of wraps up my dream team of international apps. Um, tonight, uh, we got to discuss three different tools that can really be transformational in your classroom. Bow Clips allows us to use the media that we want to in a legal and licensed way. I can't stress that enough. So much we do in education, you know, we say we beg, borrow, and steal. We, we should be really ensuring that um, we're demonstrating to our students that we too are using digital citizenship appropriately. And we too do pay for the music that we listen to. We too do pay um, for the videos that we should be paying for. Um, and in this age of piracy and everything, it, it's kind of a breath of fresh air for somebody to say, hey, let's do it the right way. Uh, Criaza allows us to really just have intuitive and, and joyful uh, digital storytelling and team learn um, allows us to get our students all on that same page and start mastering their projects. Um, so I've really enjoyed my time with you all tonight. Um, and if you're, most of you are watching this uh, in the archives, I'm really enjoying being able to, um, if you wanna jump down to the next slide, keep that conversation going. And being able to do that um, through social media on Twitter is probably one of the best ways. Um, Bow Clips and Criaza both have pretty active social media accounts. And um, I am always uh, not only willing to uh, follow back, but really engage in some discussion and questioning. You can always reach out to me um, for any future ideas that you might have um, or anything that you might need in the future. Uh, Twitter is a great way to do that. Well, Dave, thank you. And so yeah. um, I, I guess uh, you're on Central Time, so it's so it's eight o'clock your time. But did yeah. you get dinner tonight, or you have dinner afterwards? Uh, yeah, I I don't know yet. So uh, tonight ah. I actually uh, put my son, my my wife got got off of work and and rushed home so that I could step out of the house. Um, I'm actually here at work because you know as I shared uh, with mm -hmm. Mitch earlier, um, we are moving in, in, a, in a couple of weeks. And so my house just ends up looking uh, like box city, which is kind of what I'm sitting in front of, I guess, too. But, you know, I'm not waking up my son and that, that's always an important piece. Right. Okay. So well, have, have a good rest of the evening. Yeah. And, uh, and, and thank you. I'll, uh, I'll see you um, hopefully at a conference this winter. You're going to be yeah, at FETC or... Oh, what, I won't be at FETC, but uh, I will be um, at the Ties Conference here in, in the Midwest. It's probably one of uh -huh. the um, biggest regional uh, conferences in the upper Midwest area. Uh, draws from Minnesota and the five surrounding states, and it's really kind of the, the next step down from ISTE for those that don't uh, or can't travel uh, to ISTE. Um, to be able to learn about tools. Um, and I'm really excited because I'm going to be sharing a, a session very similar to this uh, with a room full of Minnesota locals, being able to um, demonstrate some of these awesome tools to really change that learning experience for students. Cool. Okay. Well, um, yeah. right now, I'm not sure if, if I had my choice of when to go to Minnesota, it wouldn't be this winter. I, well, I, I go on. On <laughs> yeah, summers okay. are pretty but great. Who knows? So. Who knows? You guys enjoy, um, and uh, we'll see you next time. Okay, see you next time, Dave. Thank you very much. Yes, and uh, this is Mitch Weisberg. I'm signing off from EdChat Interactive. And uh, those of you watching the archives, I uh, hope you try these three programs. They all look phenomenal. And